thanks, Sanjam. Glad to be here. I'm going to talk about uh, our work on the power of secure two-party computation. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Karmit Hazai from Barilan. Can everyone hear me? OK. Ooh. All right, so this talk is going to be about zero-knowledge proofs. It's always nice to begin with the definition of zero-knowledge. Uh, it's an interactive protocol between a prover and a verifier that basically satisfies three properties. First, a prover can convince a verifier of a true statement. Two, soundness, which says that no cheating prover, even if computationally unbounded, can convince a verifier of a false statement. And the zero knowledge, uh, which is central to this uh, uh, definition, says that no efficient verifier can learn anything more than the validity of the statement. The zero knowledge property is further, I mean, to uh, be a little more precise, is to say that for every probabilistic polynomial time adversary V star, there is a PPT simulator S that can produce views that are indistinguishable to what the verifier sees in a real interaction. So just pictorially, what the verifier sees in uh, the real interaction are basically the transcript of the messages and the random coins, and the simulator must be able to generate them indistinguishably. OK, so for what languages do we know how to construct zero knowledge? Actually, all of IP. But in this talk, I am more interested in the class of NP. And it was shown early on that assuming, I should say, the first paper didn't do it based on one-way functions, but I'm just going to say that assuming one-way functions, there exists zero knowledge proofs for uh, all of NP. Uh, a little bit of a biased history here. Uh, I'm not going to list all the works. Uh, a little bit that's relevant to uh, my talk. Uh, initially, the uh, zero knowledge proofs for general NP statements were constructed for specific NP complete languages, like graph tree coloring for Hamiltonicity. This also a work that does for satisfiability, but it was not based on general assumptions. It was based on the quadratic residue. But along this line of work, a major break breakthrough was uh, achieved by Ishai Koshilevitz, Ostrowski, and Sahai where they show that you can construct a zero-knowledge proof for any NP relation starting from an honest majority MPC protocol for a related function RS. Honest majority, this is just one of your results. There are many more uh, of this flavor uh, in their paper. But the core to their uh, approach here is to use, um, was to introduce this idea of MPC in the head. Besides in introducing this powerful technique, this work actually constructed one of the first simplest zero-knowledge proofs for general NP statements without expensive car productions by instantiating the MPC with a, a simple MPC protocol. Also, in, this, in the same work, using very clever uh, ideas of how to choose the MPC protocol, they even construct asymptotically communication-efficient or even optimal, in some sense, uh, zero-knowledge proofs. And more recently, Giacomelli et al. extend this framework and also give practical implementations of uh, uh, these proofs. OK, so our work is sort of similar in spirit in this uh, line of work. And our main result, informally stated, shows that starting from any two-party protocol in the OT hybrid, we can um, construct a zero-knowledge proof for any NP relation. Now, I mean, two party is supposed to be a specific case of MPC, so something is going on here. First, we show for any two party computation in the oblivious transfer hybrid, which means the parties have access to uh, a, an OT functionality. And I'll also argue, like in a couple of slides down, why the ICOS approach does not work for, at least directly work for two party uh, protocols. Now, I'm going to list some corollaries. They are not quite corollaries. It needs extra work. But just to illustrate that this technique, what additionally does it give us that ICOS does not already give is, one, we show actually a very simple zero-knowledge proof using garble circuits. Garble circuits can be seen as an instantiation of a two-party computation protocol. And previously, we only knew how to get uh, zero-knowledge arguments from garble circuits. A second one, we show that we can strengthen this definition of zero-knowledge proof and get this property called uh, input delayness. I'll talk about this a little later, but very uh, informally, it says that the statement and witness is made available to the prover only in the last round. 
So the, the input is delayed to the prover. And previously, actually even quite recently, uh, such protocols were uh, constructed for very specific sigma protocols. And if you wanted for general NP statement, the work that we know of is uh, uh, traces back to the 90s and requires uh, expensive card production. So ours is black box, and I'll tell you what this means. Uh, in a sense, you can read it as saying it does not require card production. And the third, uh, and the technically most involved, which I probably won't have time today, is um, we also construct adaptive zero-knowledge proofs. And adaptive here means that the simulator not only needs to simulate the view of the verifier, but at the end, say it should also, if the prover is corrupted, produce a view for the prover consistent with the transcript generated. Okay, so that's adaptive zero knowledge. And we show starting from two PC protocols. Again, I'm simplifying things here. We need additional uh, things that need to be uh, additional properties that the two-party computation need to satisfy for these to work. But essentially, we get uh, these results using our compilation technique. Now, before I go into how we do this, I want to start off with, uh, and one more thing. Previously, to construct adaptive zero knowledge, again, required uh, car productions and um, was done by Lindell and Zarosin. Okay, so before I get into uh, our approach, I'm going to start with the ICOS approach. So here, basically, you start off with an MPC protocol. So given an NP relation R, you're going to start off with an MPC uh, protocol for a related function F. This function F is basically, it has the statement hard-coded and computes the relation on the XOR of the inputs of all the n parties. Okay, so what happens here? The prover uh, in her head will emulate an instance of this uh, MPC protocol, giving inputs to the parties and generates view according to this MPC protocol. Then, in the first round, the prover commits to the views of each of these parties. In the second round, the verifier challenges the prover on two of these parties, for which the prover needs to open. Uh, the views, basically decommit the views. And the verifier checks that these views are consistent and also that the output computed in this MPC protocol is one, namely that the relation holds. Now, if you look at this approach, actually, if you instantiate this MPC protocol with known information theoretic protocols that we know in literature, we need at least three parties because of honest majority. They also have an instantiation based on GMW and as written in the work, this also requires uh, three parties because GMW is in the OT hybrid, and to ensure consistency of how these OT channels are uh, used by the parties, they need to open two views. Okay, so they need at least three parties for uh, privacy. Now, I said as it was written there because in the very next talk, you're going to see how this can be extended to also work for uh, two parties uh, in the OT hybrid. However, uh, I want to say that the remaining two results that we have, which is um, delayed inputness and adaptive uh, zero knowledge, cannot be cast in this framework. And roughly speaking, the intuition is that when the prover commits to all the views, it sort of binds everything. The statement, the witness, everything is bound. I mean, if you use statistically binding commitments, it's literally bound to the first um, first message, and you can't get any delayed inputness. OK, so this is sort of the, uh, the limit of uh, ICOS. And now I'm going to give our, our construction of zero knowledge based on uh, garbled circuits. First, let me just define what uh, garbled circuits are. Very briefly, I'm sure most of you know it's something that we love and care about. Uh, garbling can be think, thought of as a set of four algorithms. Uh, there is a garbling algorithm that takes the circuit outputs the garbled circuit, a translation table, and key labels. And I'm going to call DK the decryption key or the translation table, SK the secret key, or you can think of it as the randomness used to garble the circuit. And then there is an encoding procedure that shows how to encode any input to a garbled input. Then there is an evaluation procedure that takes a garbled circuit and a garbled input and outputs a garbled output which the decoder using the translation table can give the final output. 
Okay? The two properties that we need here are correctness, namely y must be equal to c of x, where c is the original circuit, and security says that there is a simulation that can produce um, the garbled circuit and um, consistent garbled inputs and translation table just from the circuit and the output. That is basically without the input. So this is the security of a garbled, uh, my formulation of the garbled uh, circuit. Now let's construct a zero knowledge proof from this. So the circuit that we are going to take is similar to um, anything else. We're going to have x hard coded in the circuit and it's going to evaluate the relation on the witness w. Now, what does the prover do? The, pr the prover gobbles the circuit, also gobbles the input witness that she knows. In the first message, the prover gives the gobble circuit, the translation table, and commits to SK, which is the randomness used to garble. Now, the verifier is going to challenge with a bit B. Now, depending on whether it's 0 or 1, the prover, if it's 0, is going to decommit and give the randomness used to garble the circuit. And if it's 1, she's just going to give the garbled input corresponding to the witness. Now, what does the, ver the verifier do? If B is 0, he checks if the circuit was garbled correctly. And if B is 1, he's just going to evaluate the circuit and check if the output of the relation is 1 according to this computation. Now, why is this protocol sound? This, this protocol is sound basically by the correctness of the garbling. If you can give... Um, valid randomness for the gobbling and a gobbled input that gives, uh, that outputs uh, one, then you actually uh, can show that the statement is true. In fact, it satisfies what is known as special soundness that I'll get to in a minute. And zero knowledge essentially follows from the simulation of gobbled circuit. The simulator guess, guesses whether B is zero or one. If it's zero, it just needs to proceed honestly, and if B is one, it uh, uses the simulation. Okay, so this is a very simple zero knowledge proof starting from uh, garbled circuits. Now, before I go to the, so this basic zero knowledge proof, I'm going to modify it so that it also gives the input delayed property, but first let me go over this definition very quickly of what input delayedness means. means. Okay, so this is the definition of zero knowledge proofs. First, I'm going to discuss what special soundness is. Special soundness basically says for, this is defined for three round protocols, which is going to be the case for us. For a given first message and two convincing transcripts with different second and third messages, you can extract a witness. That's what special soundness says. And so what happens in a delayed input zero knowledge proof is that they don't have the input x comma w and x at the beginning of the protocol. So that is actually revealed after the second message. Now, we need to change the definitions accordingly because the input is revealed only later. First, we append the, the special soundness guarantee because these two transcripts might not even talk about the same statement. So to enhance this definition, we take the approach of Chumpy et al where basically we say that given two accepting transcripts, you need to output the witness for both the transcripts, the statements corresponding to both these transcripts. And simulation, I'm not going to uh, talk about, but essentially it should be able to simulate even if the statement is revealed after the second message. Okay, so how am I going to uh, modify this protocol to get input delayness? First, we can't hard code X into the circuit before we garbage. So how do we fix it? We're just going to put x as an input to the circuit. In addition, we are also going to make x part of the output because in one of the cases, the verifier should know what statement is being proved. Otherwise, the prover will be able to prove any true statement. So x has to be part of the output to specifically show which statement the prover is trying to prove. Okay? So we modify the circuit to have x as the input. And instead of garbling once, we are actually going to garble twice. So just two independent garbling of the same circuit, it's going to send that. Now the verifier still asks just a single bit, zero or one. The statement and witness is revealed after the second round. Now if B is zero, the prover shows that the first garbling was done correctly and gives input key labels according to the statement and witness for the second 
guard bling. And if B is one, he's go she's going to do it the other way around. Now, why is this protocol, uh, what does the verifier do? The verifier does what he was doing before. Basically, he's going to verify that this, the first instance, if B is zero, that the first instance was constructed correctly, and the second instance evaluates to x comma one, okay? And if B is, B is one, he does it the other way around. Now, why is this sound? If the prover can convince two in two different transcripts for the same first message, it means that you can obtain two valid garblings and two valid inputs that give uh, the answer one, okay? So you get this uh, adaptive special soundness property just by this simple modification that we do uh, to the circuit. And simulation is essentially the same as before. So this technique, because of the way we use garbled circuit, easily extends to getting something that is input delayed, okay? Uh, in our paper, we also show how to get negligible uh, soundness, but for now, if you want, you can just uh, um, be satisfied with uh, soundness half in some sense, okay? All right, so one more point if, uh, for people familiar with the garble circuit literature is that if you choose the input and witness or inputs to the garble circuit after the circuit has been revealed, you need a stronger property. You actually need adaptive input garbling. And you're going to see in this uh, crypto uh, one such construction that we use uh, in our work as well. All right, so I have three minutes. I promised you that I'm going to construct a zero knowledge proof starting from any two party computation in the OT hybrid, but you know, I went on about getting everything from garbled circuits, okay? But garbled circuits themselves can be seen as an instance of a, a two party computation in the OT hybrid, as well as a randomized encoding. These are two interpretations of garbling. And we show in our work how to construct a zero knowledge from both of them just using a one way function. Actually, we, we show a loose transformation from two-party computation in the OT hybrid to randomized encoding and then to uh, zero knowledge. Now, what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes is actually to show this direct construction from two PC in the OT hybrid uh, to uh, zero knowledge. So this is the main theorem um, stated uh, more formally. For any NP relation R, Consider a two-party computation in the OT hybrid for a function f such that these two properties satisfy. It should be perfectly correct, and it should admit UC security against uh, honest but curious adversaries. And then you can show, assuming one-way function, there is a zero-knowledge proof for R where f is black box in R. Again, I'm not going to define this formally, but stay tuned for the next talk for how this is formally defined. Okay? All right, so static zero knowledge from uh, two-party computation. The function that we are going to do is analogous to what uh, the ICOS approach. It's going to evaluate the function on the XOR of the inputs of the two parties. I'm not going to do the input delayed part. I'm just going to do basic zero knowledge proof from uh, two-party computation. So what does the prover do? The prover in her head computes, uh, emulates this two-party computation. And in the first round, instead of committing to the view, actually shares the transcript. Now, you can't do this in an information theoretic MPC protocol because the transcript actually binds everything. But in a two-party computation, the transcript does not reveal uh, information, and that's what uh, the prover gives in the first round. Now, the verifier challenges with, says, open either party one's view, which is basically uh, its input or randomness, or party two's view, okay? Now, this is the zero knowledge uh, proof. Why is it sound? Because if you can open consistent views for both parties, by perfect correctness, there is a witness for the statement. And simulation, because I've assumed you see simulation of both parties, it just guesses the bit B and simulates according to that, okay? Now, I've cheated a little bit uh, over here. I said two PC in the OT hybrid, and the way I've written it here, you cannot do it based on one-way function, because the transcript here, I must assume some instantiation of the oblivious transfer, okay? We, in fact, show that we don't need to do that. We can encode the calls made to the oblivious transfer in a different way. So let me tell you how we do that. So let's say that there is an instance of um, the oblivious transfer where P1's input is S0, S1, and P2's input is T. How are we going to incorporate this in the emulation, how is the prover going to 
incorporated in the transcript. Basically, the prover is going to commit to S0 and S1. For every oblivious transfer, she is going to commit to both these inputs. Now, remember that the verifier challenges to open either P1's view or P2's view. Now, if he asks for P1's view, he, she decommits both S0 and S1. And if the verifier asks the second, since the prover has emulated the actions of P2, the prover knows exactly which of these two uh, inputs the P2 is going to see and decommits only that particular uh, oblivious transfer input. OK? So commitments just require one-way functions. So if you encode the oblivious transfer this way, you don't need anything more than one-way functions. I know I'm uh, out of time. I also had a slide on how to get um, adaptive uh, zero knowledge, but I'm going to skip that. And I'm just going to go to No, I heard that the first session uh, finished early, so I thought I'd have extra time. But, uh, <laughs> but that was not the case. Uh. All right. Quickly, one minute about uh, what we do. We actually not only construct adaptive zero knowledge, we also show one that has very good communication complexity. Okay? And this is sort of the technically most challenging part. We need to use malicious two-party computation, and we need an adaptive version of uh, interactive hashing. And now to my final slide. So a general perspective of what we did here was our work was more like in the spirit of how uh, ICOS constructed zero-knowledge proofs, except we started from two-party computation to zero-knowledge proofs. And we were able to get, based on garbled circuits, simple proofs based on garbled circuits, we could get this additional property of input delayness and uh, adaptive security. And another way to see is that with MPC in the head techniques, you can get like static versions of zero knowledge. If you go to two PC in the head, you can also get adaptive zero knowledge proofs without any additional assumptions. And one more point that I just want to tell you here is that this sort of reconciles the cut and choose uh, approach of garbled circuits by Lindell Pinkas. They actually show how to get malicious security without zero knowledge. And what this work essentially says is that their cut and choose does, in fact, give a zero knowledge uh, proof. And that's our basic construction of our garbled circuit. And finally, some future work. MPC in the head was instrumental in uh, the the compiler of Ishai Prabhakaran and Sahai, you can ask the same question for two PC in the head. Come and ask me after the talk, and I'll tell you what is it. Thank you.